way. Vitamin E, tocopherol. It's a lipid soluble antioxidant that's found pretty much in all anti-aging products. If a product claims it works for scars, stretch marks, or dark spot treatment, it's very uncommon not to find vitamin E in the ingredient list. We hear that vitamin E improves signs of aging. By that we mean skin darkening, elasticity, radiance, smoothness, and wrinkles. Today, we'll see if it actually works and who should use it. If this is the first time watching my videos, my name is Hewitt and I'm a pharmacist who struggled to find skincare products that worked for me. You know, products that have black and brown skin in mind. I searched around the world, literally, and got a lot of experience through the process. And now I'm sharing those lessons with you. I'm also cooking wonderful products that have our issues in mind. Trust me, you'll feel seen and understood. If you enjoy science-based information about your products, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I would also appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing so you can get notifications about new videos in the future. So before we dive in, I wanted you to see how thick vitamin E is. It's more like um, a honey consistency, to be honest. Due to this thick consistency, it can be comedogenic or clogging and cause problems for acne prone individuals. So if you tend to easily break out, this vitamin uh, may not be your BFF. Of course, the concentration in most of the products you use is probably very, very, very low, but in my case, even that's enough. So um, just getting that information out early on. As I mentioned, vitamin E is lipid soluble, which means it can go down the deepest layers of the stratum corneum through sebaceous glands. Its affinity also helps it stay within cell membrane and mop those nasty free radicals. Side note, there is a water soluble derivative that's proprietary, but that's the exception. So we'll stick to the, you know, the naturally occurring non-polar form of vitamin E that you're more likely to find in your products. Natural plant-derived vitamin E is composed of eight different derivatives alpha, beta, gamma, and sigma tocopherols, and the related alpha, beta, gamma, and sigma tocotrienols. Tocotrienols have unsaturated side chain, and tocopherols have saturated side chain, in case um, you're wondering. Gamma tocopherol is the most abundant tocopherol in diet, and alpha tocopherol is the most abundant vitamin E derivative found in human tissues. As far as skincare products are concerned, alpha tocopherol acetate and alpha tocopherol are the most commonly found um, ingredients. The free OH or hydroxyl group of tocopherol can easily be oxidized by the air around us, but it can be protected from oxidization by esterification with a carboxyl group of an organic acid like acetic acid. In that case, we find tocopherol acetate, the most widely form of vitamin E in skincare products we use. Tocopherol acetate is a prodrug, meaning it will be converted to tocopherol after it's applied to the skin. Vitamin E is synthesized by plants and must be obtained from plant-based oils, nuts, seeds, fruits, and vegetables as dietary source. I always encourage healthy diet because you simply cannot have healthy skin eating unhealthy food. Simple fact. So the best source of vitamin E in food are nuts such as almonds, peanuts, oils such as sunflower, safflower, and soybean oil, big greens, colored greens, spinach, fruits such as mango, avocado, wheat germ oil, pumpkin, red bell pepper, and my least favorite uh, vegetable, asparagus. Vitamin E was first discovered in 1922 by herbist Evans and Katrin Bishop. While conducting studies, they noticed that the female rats at their lab kept having miscarriage when fed diet that didn't contain what we now know as vitamin E. They could see fetal development was restored by adding wheat germ oil. Then, vitamin E was isolated in 1936 and was given the Greek name tocopherol, which means the childbirth producing alcohol. In 1938, a man called Paul Carrer synthesized vitamin E and demonstrated its antioxidant uses. In the 1940s and 1950s, the antioxidant activity of vitamin E was well established and it was recognized an essential nutrient in 1968. As you know, the epidermis is the primary barrier that protects you from everything that's out there. It's constantly exposed to UV light and other oxidative stressors. Free radicals cause damage by oxidizing lipids to lipid hydroperoxides, proteins to protein carbonyls, and DNA to 8-hydroxyguanines. None of these we want for our health or skin appearance. 
The constant attack from oxidative species can eventually manifest as phototoxicity, immunosuppression, photoaging, and cutaneous neoplasia. We just mentioned antioxidant uses, but what other uses does vitamin E has that's supported by literature? Well, we'll just go through them now. But first, let's look at its free radical scavenging activity closely. Ultraviolet radiation causes skin aging by producing free radicals, aka reactive oxygen species, which interfere in the collagen synthesis, degrade collagen and elastin, and damage lipid components of membranes, uh, leading to more water loss and more inflammation. Studies show that antioxidants can slow down and even reverse these oxidative damage. As an antioxidant, vitamin E suppresses chain initiation and or chain propagation steps by donating its 6-phenolic hydrogen to the oxygen radicals and plays a key role in protecting epidermal cell membranes and lipids from oxidative damage. So many studies have demonstrated the role of topical vitamin E in reducing both acute and chronic UV-mediated skin responses as well. The other widely claimed use of vitamin E is in melasma, dark spot, and hyperpigmentation in general. According to the extensive research I've done, vitamin E alone has minimal effect in the treatment of melasma. It can help with pigmentation by interfering with lipid peroxidation of melanocyte membranes, increasing intracellular glutathione content and tyrosinase inhibition, but it needs to be coupled with another ingredient such as vitamin C because its activity is simply not that strong alone. I mentioned this in my vitamin C video, check it out here um, in case you haven't watched it, that vitamin C and E work wonderfully together, not just effectively, but synergistically. One study calls them partners in defense, which I thought was a nice title. We know that vitamin C is a major water-soluble antioxidant and it scavenges oxygen radicals in the water phase. And vitamin E is a lipid-soluble antioxidant that scavenges oxygen radicals within the membranes, which means when working together, they leave nothing behind. Also, vitamin C can regenerate oxidized vitamin E into its active worm to cover all. What I call efficiency. One of the most popular applications of vitamin E is for the treatment of burn surgical scars and wounds. But studies looking at the efficacy of vitamin E in the treatment of burns and scars have been disappointing as well. When used together with silicone gel, yes, it does show um, that it can help, but again, not very strong um, in that area as well. To wrap it up, if you use vitamin E, it's better you use it with vitamin C. Topical use of 15% L-ascorbic acid combined with 1% alpha tocopherol has been shown to provide significantly more protection against sunburn um, cell formation compared with um, either L-ascorbic acid or 1% alpha tocopherol alone. The gain is more pronounced with the two together, even in the case of hyperpigmentation. Vitamin E might not be for you if you usually break out, so remember that too. Finally, it's advised to use it under your sunscreen, just like vitamin C. Pre-treatment of the skin with vitamin E is more effective than trying to reverse damage that's already occurred. That's it for today. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. As always, if you're interested to learn more, you can find links to literatures I referenced in the description section. I'll catch you next week. Take care, my friend.